Welcome back friends, welcome back um, to the homestead. In the first video of this series, we discussed the potential issues with traditional greenhouses and the benefits of using a passive solar model. However, during my research on passive solar greenhouses, I noticed that many options seem to be either excessively expensive or poorly constructed. While I understand that material costs have risen in recent years, these greenhouses still seem to be significantly more expensive than traditional options. Additionally, it seems that many designs prioritise aesthetics over functionality, which can lead to inefficient use of space. A greenhouse is primarily for growing food, and it should not be treated as a vanity project. However, I also noticed some DIY designs that may not be able to withstand the elements for more than a year. What is needed is a balance between functionality, quality and a neat appearance. With that in mind, I am considering the core goals and rules of our passive solar greenhouse project. So in short, it should be 1. Affordable 2. Functional 3. Replicable four, workable, and five, durable. And perhaps a sixth could be hackable. I'll explain that later. Let me expand on these points in a bit more detail. Affordable. Okay, so whilst the build of our passive solar greenhouse isn't on a fixed budget, my goal is to demonstrate that you can build a well-engineered, spacious, efficient, passive solar greenhouse without breaking the bank. If we look at a replacement polycarbonate greenhouse, similar to the one that we've already got, which is 4mm polycarbonate, then the current cost of an 8m by 3m is about €600. Euros. And if you want 6mm polycarbonate, then you're looking more towards €1,000. To keep costs down, then it makes sense to use as much of our own timber as possible, but that's mostly just the upright posts which we'll make from tree trunks we already have. Rule number two, functional. The greenhouse is for growing food, and so we want to maximise the floor space for doing just that. Some of the floor will be used to host the mass that will retain the heat that's generated during the day, and some of the floor will be used for one long walkway. But in total, we should have about 60% floor space dedicated to beds. Rule number three, Replicable. I want to document everything that I'm doing here and produce a set of plans, a blueprint if you will, so that others can copy this build and replicate it for themselves. Rule number four, workable. We need to be able to easily work inside the greenhouse. We need to be able to get around and have access to all the plants without falling over something or each other and not bang our heads on any of the framework above us. Rule number five, durable. It needs to have a good lifespan. I'm looking for at least 10 years. That would be the same as the warranty on the polycarbonate. So it's reasonable to expect a minimum of 10 years, but hopefully much longer. Hackable. I want to be able to modify the greenhouse and I want others to make suggestions on how they would modify it and for it to be a project which is ongoing and is about tech. Tech to control ventilation or other elements and to collect data that in time I plan to share that data with people who would be interested in joining in a kind of open source project and maybe even build a community of European passive solar greenhouse owners. So there we are. There's my thoughts on the five stroke six pillars, rules, goals of building a successful passive solar greenhouse project. In the next video, I'll look at my eight key considerations when building a passive solar greenhouse. So I'll be looking at more practical areas. So what are your thoughts on this video? Maybe you've got some experiences in this area. My first video drew a lot of comments and I'll be happy to take more comments down in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you think I might be wrong or maybe even right. And I look forward to that discussion. Do give us a thumbs up if you like this video at any point. And I hope you found the video of interest and perhaps of some use. And if you did, I'm sure you'll find some of our other videos 
um, equally helpful and interesting as well. And if you're not subscribed, do subscribe because there's lots more of these videos on their way. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye for now.